Hello there, you're listening to Rock Made of Metal with myself, Ian Burley, and because I'm an idiot, this interview didn't really go the way I planned. This is the first ever telephone interview that I've done using a new computer, and I thought I got all the settings right and whatnot, but I did not, <laughs> um, because in many ways, the ideas that I tried to do for this didn't work. For instance, the way that you could hear Toshi over the interview did not work, so that failed, and also when editing the interview you couldn't hear my voice so you didn't know the questions I was going to ask. So this interview is going to be different compared to the other interviews that I've done that I'm going to say the question and then you're going to hear him speak. So nevertheless, uh, this is the real interview with Toshi. I'm sorry it didn't go out live as planned but let's get straight into it. We go straight into it with the question of, um, so give us the basic details of your new album Youngblood. Yeah, well, uh, Youngblood is it's a, it's a bit different from what we've done before. It's not like we we haven't totally uh, meant to have no album or anything, but but it's a bit <clears throat> different. It's it's a bit more traditional hard rock, like classic hard rock style over it. It's got more of uh, that seventies to it. Without art, we need to make uh, a retro album at all. We, we like the production and everything is. Is uh, we this update uh, as as I can be, but comes to the the songs and the, the guitar parts and and the melodies and and everything. It's gone more towards the classic hard rock, which we we actually have been doing for the last albums. But I think on this album we took it uh, maybe a giant leap in that direction, and it's also recorded very much live in studio. Um, we recorded all like guitars, bass, and drums. We recorded that live, and then we did uh, run in and, and fix. If someone fucked up on a good take, then we fixed just that. And and we did a um, uh, little bit of overdubs, even though there are actually very few overdubs on this album, as opposed to uh, our previous albums, uh, which has a lot of overdubs. Uh, and and then we we did all the vocals and and added some keyboards and some you know percussion and stuff uh, towards the end. But it but in in general, it's very much a live recorded album in studio. And we did that on purpose because we wanted that live energy that we felt hadn't been missing in our previous albums. We felt that we 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 have made um, in the past we made good albums, but they kind of lacked that energy level that we sort of wanted and we realized that you know if we're going to get that energy level then then we probably had to record it more live because then you obviously you get more of that live energy so all in all that's pretty much says most about the album that it's you know it's 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 more energy it's more colors it's more fun basically um and it's more retro in some some aspects so it sounds like then you're happy that the album was uh, more live and less produced. You kind of got rid of that fear of it being overproduced. Then would you say this is true? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We we did it because we felt that you know a lot of albums these days they're they're so perfect. You know, uh, there's nothing. But there are no mistakes, and and there's hardly any. Uh, uh, you know, as a, as a musician, you're not vulnerable at all. You, you're pretty much safe because everything has been in, has been perfect, uh, has, has been made perfect, and and we felt that that sort of that kind of lacks in today's music. In well, uh, in, in a lot of today's music, of course, there's a lot of musicians who who does really amazing al- albums that have the energy and, and, and not all the, the need for perfection all the time. But that's what we wanted to do, and we had a lot of fun doing it. It was a lot more fun to make an album this way because, in a, in a sense, it's we've gone the other way around because when we started out making albums, we you know, we sat down and we wrote music for the album and, and, um, and sort of uh, made uh, pre-productions and... and per- try to make them as perfect as possible and then we went into studio uh, and this time we just went into a rehearsing studio and said okay let's just make music and, and, and record it as quick as possible which is you know normally where bands start out you know you start out in a rehearsing room and, and just and, and just enjoy yourself and, and write music and, and then you record it and you have no clue what you're doing so you just 
you know, and you can just, just play it as live as possible because that's the only way you know how to play, you know. So we've kind of gone the other way around from 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 where we started out. As, as We started out as professionals and now we're amateurs, so to speak, in, in the way we make albums. You're signed to a new record label than your previous three albums. The, um, with this said, uh, this new kind of style of creating music and whatnot, did they have any uh, effect on that? No, none at all. Uh, it, so it, it's got nothing to do with the label because basically we we written all this music before we signed with them, and um, and and you know when we when we signed with them, we we told them that uh, you know you can interfere with everything you feel like you have to interfere with, but when it comes to the music, we need to be free to do it the way we want it. Uh, and then, you know, like I said in the beginning, if we should end up with uh, making a uh, an R&B or a techno album, then, then, of course, they would have stopped us and said that this is not what you, you this is not why we signed you guys. But apart from that, I said, as long as we make uh, music within the the genre that we're supposed to make music within, then we need to be free to do make music uh, on our own terms and 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 not being interfered with at all. And they, we never heard anything from them uh, until we gave them uh, the album and said, "This is it. This is the album." But I think the the the, the change in, in in music is more. Um, like I said, it's been it's been an ongoing process for well at least the last two albums, uh, and it's also you know like the the more classic, the more uh, honest, straight to the point hard rock has got a revival lately, and of course I guess that has probably influenced us a bit as well, having heard other bands who play really really good classic hard rock. But it's also, you know, it's the music that we used to listen to when we were kids. You know, we we listened to Kiss and Martin Crew and and Van Halen and and all of this. Um, so it's it's the kind of music that we it's it's the album that we wanted to make. But I guess the revival that has been uh, late the last few years with more uh, traditional hard rock, uh, 70s, 80s, even hard rock has got a huge revival lately. I think that has probably influenced us a bit as well because you, you know, when you hear hear other bands who do that kind of music really well, and then you go like, yeah, you know, you know that we knew that, you know, we can we can uh, write guitar parts that also because we're good enough and, and we know uh, we know the sort of the history of that music really well. So it's it was it, it wasn't a conscious decision. It was we just started writing songs and then we realized that okay, this is probably a bit different from what we've done before. But then we were like, but it's fun, so fuck it, let's just make the songs and see what happens. <laughs> so you're talking about and making uh you were talking about an R and B album there. Is RJ Horn ever going to make an R and B album by any chance? No, uh, no, we have no, we haven't reached that point yet. One day we we might wake up and go like, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. But we haven't reached that point yet. When when I talked about knowing the history of the music, uh, you know, we I guess we wouldn't know too much of that history. That so we'll probably make a lousy R and B album anyway. But moving on, so as the lead singer, um, you're the lead writer as well too for Audrey Horn. I was wondering if you could talk to us about some of the lyrical cool themes in this album. Just give us a overview of them, if you could. Uh, uh, the themes, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess it's, it's pretty much the same as um, our previous albums. When I write lyrics, they're, they're a lot about, you know, pretty common topics. It's I write what about I write about what I know, you know, and you know I write about a lot of you know stuff that happens to you, good shit that happens to you, and bad shit that happens to people, and and I, I you know I'm not a great storyteller, and and and, I'm, and I don't write lyrics that sort of has six different levels of depth, uh, and, but but I, I try to make sort of more uh, make pictures in a sense I, I use words and phrases that I think sort of can um, underline a point without actually telling the point uh, if you know what I mean and so so I, I you know I talk a lot about about uh, issues like being uh, uh, 
disappointed about someone, you know, or, or feeling disappointed about yourself or, or fucking up and, or, and there's songs about, you know, drinking, partying, how that, how you have this sort of love-hate relationship to this because it's fun and you always love going out. Uh, we made some drink and, and, you know, with uh, the guys in the band, we, you know, I, I love having a good party with them. But at the same time, you can't do it too much because then it starts uh, interfering with uh, the job you're doing when you're on tour, you know. You, you, you are supposed to deliver a good show. And if you party too much, then, then you know, then, you know the, the live show will suffer from it. So, and it's, <clears throat> and I, I've read a lot of lyrics, uh, like the, the opening song, Redemption Blues, is a lot about that, the drinking thing, that it's, you know, it, it sucks you up and it's, it, it has fucked up a lot of people that I know, but, but still, it is also one of the, you know, the best times you can have is when you go out and have a really good party with your friends. And then, then some lyrics are about like the the young blood lyrics is more about that is sort of more us growing old, older as a band, and you always you always meet these these young bands who have no respect for anything and. And, and, you know, they talk about people who's done amazing stuff and they're like, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's nothing. He's old. He's, he's fucked. And then, and then you go like, well, he did release some fucking amazing albums, you know, so maybe you should, you know, show some respect for what he did, even though you think his album sucks today, you know? Uh, so that song is pretty much about that, that, that young boy, the, the guy who's, who's, who doesn't, He's not afraid of anything, and he doesn't uh, have respect for anyone or anything. And and uh, it's kind of about that these guys will always, at some point, uh, come up against uh, the one thing that they do not have, not do not know how to uh, break, which is experience. You know, um, I, I I wrote that after I read an. Uh, I read an interview with a, a young band who, who were talking about, yeah, Motorhead, yeah, they're just fucking crap now, and he's old, and uh, blah, 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 he's he's nothing these days. I'm like, come on, it's Lemmy, how how can you, you know, and I, I, I just went like, what the fuck, what have you done? <laughs> come on. And uh, so, well, and in, in, in many ways, the songs are about issues, but it's not, you know, it's not always easy to um, to know what I'm talking about, I guess. So that's why I just try to make interesting pictures, and I try to use, you know, like on um, on uh, This Ends Here, I use, uh, all the lyrics are kind of about being on a boat, and, and it's kind of a pirate-ish theme to the, the lyric, but it's basically just about... Uh, being in a band, how how you you how you you can argue, you can fight, and you can uh, you can get pretty pissed at each other. But when she hits the fan, you stick together, and 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 it's you against the world in a sense. So, um, but uh, but if I if I should try to write that, if I should write words like that, it's us against the world, blah blah blah. Nothing can stop us. It would sound pretty cheesy. So I try to you know I try to find a picture that sort of where I can say these things without sounding so fucking cheesy.